Welcome back to Recap Scenes. Another spoiler alert, so buckle up everyone. Today's film, The Bad Seed, is a movie adaptation of the horror thriller 1954 novel by William March. The Bad Seed was first aired in 1985. In the second remake, the movie begins with the nine-year-old main character, Emma Grossman, who watches a drowning cat in the fountain. Unlike any kids of her age, who usually runs after a pet to save their life, Emma doesn't mind the cat at all. Instead of helping the cat, Emma draws the blinds. While Emma's preparing for her day, Emma tells David that her teacher, Mrs. Ellis, just gave out a citizenship medal to one of her classmates. A citizenship medal is an award given to a student who mirrors and exemplifies the school's values, honesty, grace, and compassion. Just like any competitive kid, Emma informs her father how much she wants to win the award. David, knowing her daughter who excels in every field, believes she will bag the award. Angela, David's psychiatrist's sister, comes into the scene telling David that she found Emma a new babysitter. Emma cuts off David and Angela's conversation by telling them that there's a dead cat in the fountain. David takes out the cat and explained what probably happened. Still, Emma shows no trace of worry nor care. At school, a wasp frightened everyone but Emma. She simply caught the wasp and frees it. Meanwhile, David started interviewing the new babysitter, Chloe, a professional snowboarder who turned nanny after an accident five years ago. With Chloe's experience and skills, David hired her. David then gives an overview of how and what type of girl Emma is, smart, sweet, and focused. While at the playground, Emma overhears that Kitty received a beautiful watch on her birthday. It draws everyone's attention, including Emma. As Kitty and her friends were playing, Emma intentionally hit Kitty that made her fall to the ground. As Mrs. Ellis is watching them, Emma acted to be compassionate towards Kitty, but without delay, Emma took the watch without anyone noticing. Merit Day Emma's excited to get the medal. She knows that she'll bag the citizenship award. She's certain. David helps Emma prepare. Like a loving and caring father to his daughter, David combs Emma's hair. Thinking that she'll be late, Emma starts to feel agitated. Mrs. Ellis started the ceremony and gives the citizenship award to Milo Curtis, who she believes possesses the characters that embody the values of the school. David then checks how Emma is doing at school. Mrs. Ellis assured David that Emma is doing well, that she's a remarkable child. However, Mrs. Ellis tells David that Emma is not a typical student, that she's great but she has a world of her own. Disappointed with the result, Emma tells her father that the medal was supposedly hers, that Milo, being an awful public speaker who can't spell, doesn't deserve the award. While the kids and the parents are busy getting to know each other catching up with life, Emma and Milo wander until they reach the cliff. Milo, afraid of what might happen next, tells Emma that they should go back. Milo, wondering what Emma is thinking, asks what she exactly wants. Emma finds her dad talking with the Curtises. Milo's mother is looking for his son, but Emma denies that she sees Milo. The next thing they heard is two girls screaming for help. They rush to the site that the girls pointed to and found Milo lying on the rock, lifeless. The following day, Emma wakes up early and looks light. She looks happy. As a concerned father, David asks how Emma is doing after what happened to Milo. While they are in the middle of their conversation, the new babysitter arrives. David tours her in the house. Alone in the house, Emma and Chloe bond by watching a Shirley Temple movie. They started talking about their life. They started to get to know each other and each other's secrets. The school held a funeral for Milo. Everyone seems sad except Emma, but Emma is quick to change her emotions when she faces Mrs. Curtis. Emma acted worried and sad about what happened. The following day, Mrs. Ellis visits Emma's place for some additional information about how and why Milo fell from the cliff. They told David that Emma was the last person seen with Milo, and at least three people saw her and Milo near the rocks. Emma overhears the conversation, and to divert their attention, Emma quickly staged the minor accident by falling with a glass of cookies. David confronted Emma, but Emma insisted that she was never near the rocks and that Mrs. Ellis is probably making stories since she hates Emma. Chloe tells Emma that she needs to get her story straight or else she'll get busted. No matter how many times Emma insisted that she did nothing to Milo, her babysitter thinks otherwise. Chloe knew that Emma's lying. Chloe makes Emma envision what it's like to be sent to jail and be sentenced to death. After learning the facts, Emma is gone. Chloe started looking for her, she checks the whole house, but she's nowhere to be found. Thinking that Emma could be hiding under the bed, Chloe checks it only to find out that it's where Emma had hid the citizenship medal. On the other hand, Mrs. Ellis is busy with Milo's case and Emma sees her coming back and forth from the Curtis's house. 
David comes home early. Emma checks her father who was fixing himself in front of the mirror. While talking to David, Emma noticed that the metal is hanging in David's lampshade. Emma slowly walks to the lampshade and removes the metal. The floor creaks causing David to turn around. David noticed that Emma seems to be hiding something. He asks Emma what happened and what's in her hand. Emma showed Milo's citizenship medal. David wonders why the medal is in his house. Chloe tells him that she found it under the bed while she was cleaning. David further interrogates Emma. Emma justifies her actions by saying that they were playing catch the flag game, but instead of the flag they used Milo's medal. David then calls Angela to help her find a child psychiatrist for Emma. The father-daughter relationship ended the night with Emma giving her a goodnight kiss. David then sees himself and his wife in a clinic with the doctor telling them that there is something wrong with their child. He then sees himself with Emma in a typical morning. They were eating their breakfast when Emma tells them that there's someone in the fountain, a dead body floating in the water. The two check the dead body and when David asks Emma who did it, Emma without hesitation puts the blame on Milo. David wakes up from his frightening dream. The following day, Emma and David visit Mrs. Curtis to return the medal. Emma, with sadness on her face, tells Mrs. Curtis her version of the story, that they were playing a game and Milo let her wear the medal for a while. She was supposed to give it back to Milo, but she never saw him again. Mrs. Curtis is glad that Emma returned Milo's medal, though she is still shocked by what happened to Mrs. Ellis. Mrs. Ellis died due to a car crash and her car was found with a wasp nest inside. While working in his shop, David unintentionally looked at the ceiling and noticed that the wasp's nest is gone. The following day, Emma and David leave for a doctor's appointment. David is getting more suspicious of Emma. Dr. March, the child psychiatrist, started asking Emma about how she's feeling about Milo's death. Emma perfectly knows what to say and how to act in front of people to look normal. David hears them having a good time inside the consultation room. The psychiatrist informs David that Emma is completely fine and is 100% normal. After the assessment, Chloe starts taunting Emma, pulling some mind games, telling her that it's only a matter of time for the authorities to find out that it is Emma who killed Milo. She will eventually be sent into an electric chair. She then tells Emma that David likes her and she can be a great stepmother. Emma then asks David if it's true that he likes Chloe. David assured Emma that she'll never have a stepmother. David then leaves for his date. Emma and Chloe are left alone in the house. Chloe realizes that Emma is not inside the house. She started searching for her. She gets inside the shop to check if Emma is there. Unfortunately, it's a trap that Emma set up. She trapped Chloe inside and set the shop on fire. The night Emma clarified and confessed her crimes to David, from her first nanny who fell from the stairs, Milo who fell from the cliff and died, Mrs. Ellis and the wasps, to Chloe that she set on fire. David knows what will happen next. The following day, they leave for the lake house. He's protecting Emma. While at the lake house, a corpse holds David's leg. Another nightmare due to Emma's series of crimes. The following day, David wakes up smelling gas and the burners were turned on. David asks Emma why did she do it? Why did she try killing him? David then calls Angela, telling her that Emma tries to kill him. Angela, not believing what Emma can do, told David that he needs help. David insisted that it's Emma who needs help, but he doesn't want her to be in an institution or a prison. After all, he is her father and she has to protect Emma. Thinking that he successfully killed Emma when he mixes the drugs to her favorite drink, David apologizes to Angela. Emma shot David. Emma tells David that she did not drink the chocolate that he made. Instead, she switched their drinks. David tries to snatch the gun from Emma. Surprised, Emma accidentally drops the gun. She then picks up his phone and started calling 911. She screamed and went to the bathroom to hide from her father. David was about to kill Emma when Brian, the caretaker, comes in. David explains why he needs to kill Emma, but Brian is not buying it. He shot David. The police arrive at the crime scene and Angela finds and confronts Emma. Emma looked frightened, worried, and sad. But as Angela hugs her, Emma paints a grin on her face. What are your thoughts about the movie? Be sure to check out our other recaps here.